So if you haven't heard the click of death before, then congratulations. Go and back up your data right now. Like now, pause the video, go make a backup. But if you have heard the click of death before, then you probably already have a backup because you know how scary it can be. Now the most common cause of hard drive failure is when Linus drops, it, sorry, no, whisk, is when the read-write actuator arm fails. It could be a scratched platter, a malfunctioning motor, or even just a power surge that starts a chain of other failures, but eventually what it can lead to is a clicking noise that occurs when the head can't properly align itself with the platters. The arm keeps snapping across back and forth in an attempt to read, which causes that clicking sound. So what happens then when you hear that noise? Well, sometimes you're lucky and it only clicks for a few seconds before returning to normal. And sometimes it only clicks when your system is booting up. Remember, it's normal for a hard drive to make kind of a, a slight ticking sound as the head moves back and forth, especially when accessing data randomly. But sometimes it just clicks forever and you can never access your cat pictures again or there's no click at all, and it's completely dead altogether. So what should you do? Let's start with some tips for working but failing hard drives, ones that might be making weird noises and operating very slowly, but that you can still somehow access the data on. So keep this in the back of your mind throughout the entire backup process. You want to stress this drive as little as possible. That means limiting your reads and writes to it. Many people have, might have the urge, and I've been guilty of this, to just copy the entire drive onto another drive, but that can actually be enough stress to kill the hard drive while you're trying to get the data off the hard drive, which I have personally done. So in order to keep stress as low as possible, you gotta figure out which files you actually need to back up, which will vary significantly depending on what kind of data is stored on the drive? I mean, is it an operating system drive? I can guarantee you, you don't need to back up those Windows files. You can get them off the internet or off the DVD just fine. Or is it completely stuffed full of family photos? Does it have a bunch of games on it? Are there crucial files you need for work? This is gonna be different for everyone, but we can give you guys some general guidance in terms of how to approach this. So method number one is like a targeted, like sniper approach where you kind of go, okay, I'm gonna start with my My Documents folder, I'm gonna grab that stuff. Then I'm gonna dig around in my like games folders and I'm gonna check <laughs> on the internet because they're all different for where my save games are. The ones with Cloud Save are good, don't worry, those ones are fine, but uh, I'm gonna grab my save games and then I'm gonna grab you know my important pictures, say for example, or videos, and you'll have to go through methodically and do that. The second way to approach this, and this would be more applicable for cases where either you are not tech savvy enough to, to trust yourself to find all that stuff, or your drive is predominantly made up of important data, and that would be to, instead of just dragging a box around all the data and you know, pasting it somewhere else, make an image of the entire drive. So while this does, still read the entire drive and still copy all that data somewhere else, what's cool about this approach is that instead of letting Windows be in charge of which file to copy and when, so it's seeking all over the place, it will actually just read the entire surface of the disk pretty much sequentially, which is a lot less demanding on the drive that is failing. Now, unfortunately, the one drawback to this solution is that you need another drive that's as big as the drive that's failing, including the unused space, because even just a bunch of zeros is gonna need to be copied to a bunch more zeros. So if you're backing up a two terabyte drive that has one terabyte of files on it, you're gonna need at least a two terabyte drive. Now, in order to do this, um, great piece of software called Part Image, which fully supports raw sequential disk imaging and is fully compatible with Windows and Linux. So check that out. And then once you've got an image of your dying hard drive, then you can put the dying one aside just in case, you know, something was wrong with the image or whatever else and you need to 
get after it again. Uh, you can send it in if it's under warranty once you've made sure everything is all sorted away. And then at your leisure, you can go through the files that are on the image on your replacement drive. Here is a thing to consider though. If I copy all this stuff from this failing drive to this drive, and then I send this away for warranty, this is still not backed up. You actually need another drive, whether it's an external drive or something else. Hopefully, by the time we go through the process of experiencing a failing drive, it really backs up in our minds how important it is to have your data in more than one place at a time. So what I really recommend is when you've got a failing drive, backing up to a drive that is actually a redundant array of disks, so a RAID, whether it's a soft RAID or a hardware RAID, and then once you, before you get rid of the failing one, putting that in another place as well, preferably somewhere off site, so that if a fire comes up, you won't lose all of your photos. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you never have to deal with a failing or failed hard drive, but if you do, we wish you the best of luck and our condolences. Be sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this. You can click here for more of our videos or tweet at us over here. See you again next time.